Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Hold on one second. So this is more socially acceptable. <laughs> Hello to the internet, my name is Craig Montgomery and we're here today to talk about the things that make you say who even am I? And today we're going to be talking about filtering. Whether it's an Instagram filter, something more dramatic like Photoshop, or making specific choices on how you present yourself, we all put some form of these layers between ourselves and the world. There are as many reasons to do this as there are ways to filter yourself. Wanting to impress people, wanting to fit in, and this one sounds a little weird at first, but wanting to be appropriate. There are social situations where presenting yourself in a certain way is required. Fancy events like a prom or a wedding require us to dress up. And then there are certain types of social groups that actually center around the way that the people in that group dress. My head goes directly back to high school when different cliques hung around different trees during lunch. We had uniforms, but that didn't stop the cliques from having their own sense of style. The preppy tree was full of name brand sneakers and shiny wristwatches. The band nerd tree was just kind of disheveled. Lots of messy hair and laughter. And then there was the freak tree, where I spent most of my time with my fellow Converse sporting friends. There was lots of long hair covering faces and pin marked skin. <laughs> I think it's very normal for kids to congregate in this way, and even for a style to sort of pop up in the way that they dress to represent the group. And it's actually really interesting to witness this happening in the social media world in terms of like styling of filters and things like on Instagram where you have Insta themes. And so there are different social clicks that follow different types of themes and you can see who's following who and who looks up to who by what types of themes that they do. It's, it's a very interesting uh, visual representation of what I'm talking about. So even though this is normal behavior, I want to highlight it for the things that make it weird because that's what I do. So there's a space where you can start to over identify with this basically group label. Where filtering becomes so important, you're actually afraid of being seen without that filter. So whether it's makeup, your favorite pair of dreams, dreams? <laughs> your favorite pair of jeans, neatly dressed hair, or the newest and most expensive accessory, it's really all the same thing. It's a presentation to the world of a piece of our identity. You're saying you're attractive because your face is beat to the gods. You're saying you have good taste because your sneakers are the freshest symbol of envy that money can buy. You're saying that you're cool because your clothes are all tattered and you're hanging out with all of the kids that every other person wants to be friends with. None of those things are bad in moderation, but if they become a crutch, they're going to start limiting us. If keeping up a filter starts to feel like a chore, or it starts to limit your freedom to make other choices that would bring you fulfillment or happiness, then you're selling yourself short. And to really boil it down, you're making choices about how to live your life based off of the expectations of other people. And I don't think it's going to surprise anybody when I say that I'm preaching authenticity here. We are going to find the most fulfillment and happiness in our life when we're making choices based off of the things that we know will bring us joy. I'm always going to be here saying you do you boo, because there's a specific kind of rightness that you feel when you are projecting your truest self to the world and you feel confident in who that person is. It's an experience that you, you need to find. And if you're limiting your path of choices because you're trying to conform to these group labels, then you're not possibly not going to be able to find that for yourself. And I really want to push everybody, go find yourself. Live your unicorned colored dreams or dress your body to match the darkness of your soul, whatever floats your boat. As long as you're not hurting other people or limiting their ability to make choices, then I fully support you to go and be yourself. And also just make sure that your focus is staying on the real life portion of this. There's so much editing, as I was trying to highlight with my intro to this video, that goes into our online presence. 
and it can be really easy to forget that there is Photoshop and filters and things making people look so picture perfect. And you never want to be taking your lived experience, the point of view that you are looking through right now, and comparing that to something that's curated online. Because there's just no way that it's going to live up to what you're seeing on the screen. So much of our social media experience is basically a live, shared scrapbook of sorts, which in some ways is really fun. It's super cool to see what other people are up to and to look at how they're spending their time and the, building the life that they want to live. But it also opens up this very wide and scary door to comparing this curated experience of their life to what we're going through or what we're doing with our lives. And the weirdest thing is, is that they may be doing things that you don't even want to do, that aren't even on your bucket list, never would want to do that ever, and you still start to feel bad about yourself. Like, why am I not doing that? You ask these questions that are completely pointless, because I don't want to go deep sea diving, but your video about going deep sea diving looks really cool and suddenly I don't feel brave enough. But that's literally the last thing you could ever get me to do. I hate open bodies of water. <laughs> but if you have a 12, I'm not gonna watch a 12 minute video about deep sea diving. There's like a three minute video about deep sea, deep sea diving and it's like pretty and it makes all this like, cool stuff looking I'm gonna feel like oh man I wish I was brave enough to do that and I don't I don't wish I was brave enough to do that you probably could not pay me money to do that so that whole experience is pointless why do I go through the whole mental experience of an energy spending of, of evaluating myself in a situation when if I hadn't looked at this internet thing I would have never even spent a second thinking about it. Not interested in deep sea diving. Just completely, no thank you. Anyway, <laughs> that was rambly, but I wanted to bring some light to that situation because it's super confusing and it's something that we deal with on a daily basis on the internet. I hope it was in some way enlightening or helpful to you. I also would really like to know what's your experience with social media been like? This, this translation of this experience onto the internet. What's been something that you notice you spend way too much energy on when it comes across your feed? I'm super curious, so let me know in the comments below. Give the video a like if you like it. Please subscribe to my videos if you enjoy what I've been doing. I release videos every Tuesday and they'll come to you that way, which is fun. And as always, take care of yourself. Okay, bye.